family have made their first public appearances since Prince Harry's autobiography was released. William and Catherine seemed unfazed by reporters shouting questions as they arrived at the opening of hospital wings in Liverpool. Joining me live is Royal commentator Annabel Sanderson. Annabel, the fastest selling non-fiction book of all time. It's mind-boggling. It is, although uh, some, some bits of it make you wonder whether it should be in the non-fiction department, um, because there have been a number of, uh, of points raised in this book um, which have been questioned, and, and Prince Harry himself, quite astonishingly, and I actually got it, I've written it down, said, my memory is my memory. It does what it gathers and curates and sees what's fit, and basically says that his memory might be different from objective facts which to me is astonishing. If it's an autobiography and you're going out there saying, you know, I've been subjected to years of false uh, press press stories and front page stories which aren't true, and then you go and release a book which actually just gives fodder to continually more media stories, make sure it's accurate, Harry. Annabelle, I hosted the launch of the Invictus Games here in Australia a few years ago and had a very brief meeting with, with Prince Harry and, and it was in the middle of all the wonderful work that he was doing for the Invictus Games and his image worldwide was just off the charts. It's, yeah. it's been sad, really, to watch what has happened over the past few years. Terribly sad. So there's a new poll out showing that his popularity is now down to 24% and Meghan's on 22%. The most popular royal now is Princess Anne, who is, of course, uh, really not mentioned at all in, in the book. Um, whereas actually William and Catherine are sort of second and third in the polling. Uh, Prince Harry was so popular. He was a national, I think an international hero. You know, he was a war hero. Um, he did so much for charity. And then all of a sudden, and he just became, oh my God, this, this whinger. You know, why is it called spare? It should be called whinge. It's, you know, poor me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so rich and, and I'm unemployable and, 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 and I've got a life of privilege. It's, it doesn't add up. There are people who can't afford to see doctors. There are people on waiting lists. There are people who can't afford to heat their homes. You know, there's, it's totally missing the, the real-life perspective of what's going on here. And I, I just wonder how that disconnect happened from someone that was so popular um, in, in, in the public's minds. You know, it was our Prince Harry. I'm not going to blame it all on Meghan, um, although I think there is a... Uh, there is a correlation between his declining popularity and her increasing influence. Yeah, but as, as a grown man who, as you say, has lived this life, um, yeah. you cannot abrogate your responsibility to anybody else, your wife or otherwise. I mean, these decisions that he is making, uh, he's got a, lots of people want to say it's all her fault and you, you just cannot do that. I mean, while I think that she obviously has a massive influence on him, you know, he's put all uh, all his eggs in that basket now. You know, he, he is a grown man. He's a man who's went to war. He's a father of two. Um, and, you know, now today he's saying, you know, he wants an apology and uh, from his family. Well, sorry, I remember once someone said something really horrible about me in the media and I blocked them. I didn't invite them to a state occasion. Um, and, and that's the reality of this now. Prince Harry has shown to friends and family that nothing that they say they can be confident that it's treated confidenti confidentially. Uh, so now there's the discussion about whether he will be coming to the coronation. And it's a little bit of, you know, rock and a hard place here. If he's not there, that'll be the topic of conversation. If he is there, that'll be the topic of conversation. Um, but I do think that they will try and make some kind of amends with him ahead of that time. Um, the question is whether he's open to that genuinely happening because, you know, with actions have consequences. And it seems to me that there's very little in that book. One thing that really stood out for me is when um, he described about Meghan saying that Kate had baby brain. And, oh, how, you know, how dare, don't say that. That's, to me, that's akin to a man saying, oh, time of the month, is it? It's not OK. And if a man said that to Meghan, she would rightly be saying, I'm sorry, that's a really misogynistic thing to say. 
Um, but yes, they're both grown ups. Are you going to now make the decision that your livelihood and your lovely house and, and the future uh, in California is now dependent on uh, on selling scandals about your family? Mm. Or, or, or are you going to get over it and, and do something else with your life? Many, many Republican leaning people in this country and other parts of the, the Commonwealth were wondering what would happen when the Queen passed away. Are we seeing a little bit of the dismantling, in a way, of the royal family? It's been such a massive change. This is obviously a sideshow that's going on, but King Charles has only been on the throne for months. Yeah, I mean, and, and what what's something... To, it's so sad that when someone becomes king, it, me, it means that their, their nearest and dearest has, has died. Um, actually, I think he's seen some real popularity. He's more popular now than I think than when he was Prince of Wales. Um, and I think sometimes when, when something bad happens, people regroup. Um, and, and actually what you're seeing is people say, no, no, sorry, Harry, that's out of order. This is your family here. Um, and actually this, there's, you know, the royal family are, are the, the state, the king is, is the state figurehead. Um, so it's almost like if you're being attacked, he's being attacked, you're being attacked. Uh, particularly when Harry and Meghan weren't exactly very polite about, um, about the British public. Although apparently we're not racist anymore. Apparently they didn't mean that. Something totally... That I, something totally different that's all been backtracked um i think i think the coronation will be a very popular occasion and i think um whilst there are always going to be people who are republican and you know that's totally their right to do so and any countries that, that are in the commonwealth it's totally their right to have a vote on whether they want to you know if that's something that that their that their government want to introduce um but personally for me i think this is very much actually harry driving a wedge between himself further rather than actually causing genuine and damage the royal family. It's, it's got a little bit of a, a, a it really is akin to the story. I don't know the circumstances are different as we wrap it up, but uh, the abdication of the king, we, lots of people love the crown and you, you, you saw the way that they were perceived that couple through the course of it. It's almost becoming that. Yes, but they have separated themselves mm. from it. They have put themselves in that position. And, you know, if you want to remain on good terms with your family, don't write an autobiography attacking them. Yep. Yeah. Annabelle, it's always That's good to it's always <laughs> it's always good to have a chat and I'll tell you what, while they ever keep doing it, we'll be chatting a lot more. But enjoy the rest of your <laughs> exactly, weekend. Yeah.